Hey, it's Mark and Steve here from Ripple Trading. So in addition to the Final Cut Pro 10.4.9 update, Motion also got an update with a couple of very interesting new features. Right, so even if you're a Final Cut Pro editor and you've never used Motion, you're gonna to wanna to know about these new features because they can be used in Final Cut Pro 10. Absolutely, so we'll show them to you here and please leave a comment below. Motion 5.4.6 has two new features that will be of interest to both motion graphics artists and Final Cut Pro 10 editors. First, Motion now natively supports 3D objects in the USDZ format. USDZ stands for Universal Scene Description. Developed by both Apple and Pixar, it's a single file format that contains a packaged 3D scene. While it's being used primarily by developers to create 3D models for augmented reality, you can now use these models in both Motion and Final Cut Pro 10 projects. Motion includes dozens of models in the library, in the new 3D Objects category, where they're organized into categories. You can preview a selected object here. The preview moves the object around so you can see it from different angles. Most of the built-in objects are static, but a few, like the butterfly and the robot, are animated. I'll add this one to my project. 3D objects can be repositioned, scaled, and rotated like any other layer in motion. And you can, of course, animate these changes with keyframes or behaviors. For example, I'll add a rate parameter behavior to the rotation Y of this object to have it continuously spin around. By the way, by default, Motion automatically scales all models to roughly the same size. So, when adding multiple 3D objects in a scene, in the 3D Object tab of the inspector, you can change the unit size and default orientation in order to make the objects have the correct relative size before animating them. If you add a camera to a project with a 3D object and switch to 3D, you can then pan, orbit, and dolly the camera around the object with the camera controls. You can, of course, animate the camera with keyframes and behaviors. Lights in motion can be used on 3D objects. I'll add a new light, change its color, and adjust its position. To make added lights more dramatic, you can turn down the default lighting by selecting the 3D layer and in the 3D Object tab of the Inspector, clicking the Reveal Environment Lighting button. Doing so brings you to the Properties tab of the Project layer. I'll reduce it to zero and then adjust my point light. I can duplicate the light change the color, and move the duplicate to a new location. Lights can also be animated with behaviors and keyframes. Note that you cannot modify different elements of a single 3D object. For example, with this bike object, you can't animate the wheels. You can color correct 3D objects, however. For example, I'll add a hue sat curves correction to this bike. Sample the red. Change the color. And adjust the lock points. You can use 3D models in the Shapes category to create your own objects. In this example, I've added several lights to the 3D scene, used parameter behaviors to animate the 3D objects, and a sweep behavior to animate the camera. In addition to the built-in models, you can import any 3D model in the USDZ format. You can create these models in 3D applications or download them from websites. For example, the site Sketchfab lets you download 3D models in the USDZ format. Here's a free duck model from the author BoomBap. I'll choose the USDZ version to download. 
Back in motion, I'll import it, center it, add a camera, and inspect it by orbiting the camera. You can use 3D objects in motion as source objects for replicators and emitters. For example, I'll replicate this duck, change the shape to a wave, adjust the endpoints, amplitude, and frequency, adjust the scale and the angle of the cell, check the align angle checkbox, animate the offset with a couple of keyframes, add a sweep behavior to the camera, adjust the start and end angles, tighten up these keyframes, and play that back. To help you locate 3D models that work well with motion, we have curated a set of eight collections on Sketchfab, including buildings, vehicles, places, objects, and more. Some of these models are free, and some can be purchased, and all can be downloaded in the USDZ format. We've verified that all these models work well in motion. Here's an example where I've used a 3D object as the source for an emitter. And here, I've animated a 3D object along a motion path. d objects can interact with each other. For example, here I have a 3D plane object circling a 3D planet object. Note that 3D objects cannot interact with non-3D objects in the scene. They have to be completely in front of or behind those objects based on the layer stacking order. They also cannot cast shadows. You can publish any motion project with 3D objects for use in Final Cut Pro. Here I've designed an opening title project that includes a 3D object. I'll publish it to Final Cut Pro. Then go to Final Cut, locate it in the Titles and Generators sidebar, and add it to a project. I can now change the text. and I can adjust any published parameters of the project, such as the choice of object, its position, and scale. Note that you cannot import USDZ objects into Final Cut Pro directly. You can only publish them from Motion. This new USDZ support in Motion will allow motion graphic artists and Final Cut Pro editors to incorporate 3D objects into their projects quickly and easily. There's a lot more to working with 3D objects in Motion and Final Cut Pro and we'll soon have an in-depth tutorial that will help you make the most of this great new feature. Subscribe below to get notified when we have new tutorials. The second new feature in Motion 5.4.6 is the addition of the new Stroke Filter, located in the Border category. The Stroke Filter adds an outline around the border of just about any object. For example, here I've applied it to one of the included 3D objects. Notice you can choose to hide the object and just show the outline. You can also create multiple strokes by using the Outline Gradient option and adjusting the gradient color tabs. It also works on shapes, text, and even keyed footage. It's a simple filter, but has a lot of interesting applications, and I suspect I'll be using it a lot. Wow, those new USDZ models are freaking amazing, Mark. I agree. I can't wait to see what people do with them in Motion and in Final Cut. And by the way, we're going to come out with a new in-depth tutorial that shows you everything you can do in terms of making these models, importing, modifying, animating them. 
much more that you can do with these that we could cover here. So stay tuned for that. So what did you guys think? Did you like the features? We'd love to hear comments. So go ahead and put those down there in the comments section. And please subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching.